five, four, three, two, one, zero. of the, what we call the seven minutes of terror, which is the process of landing on Mars, 
We are right to the upper reach of the atmosphere at 20,000 kilometers an hour and in seven minutes we need to be on the surface of Mars at zero velocity and in one piece. And multiple pieces is easier, but the predation is to land safely on Mars. So we do that through three uh, uh, phases of uh, slowing down or deceleration phases. The first one is the atmospheric entry that the vehicle slows down. There is an atmosphere, of course, so we can use the atmosphere to slow uh, to the friction to slow down the vehicle. And for that first uh, uh, phase, uh, the vehicle uh, heats up uh, as the exchange kinetic energy with heat, and then uh, release 99% of the energy that we come in with. Then we open a uh, partial supersonic speed, and then uh, since the the air that the uh, Mars density is so low, we need a third stage uh, of, of, of um, uh, slowing down, which is a propulsive stage, which is the last one. And that's why the velocities are very small to land. So why do we call this a release of terror? Well, this whole sequence happens autonomously, so we don't have any control of it. But what's even worse, the first time we actually do it is on Mars. On Earth, we test little pieces here and there, and we have a big simulation program, that we call it the Monte Carlo simulation, because it's a statistic in nature, where we make the system land multiple times in a computer simulation, not in real. So we are always wondering whether there is a little piece of physics that we, we didn't get right. Okay? The 99.9% uh, uh, being right is not enough, is that tenth of a percent is enough to kill the whole mission. So that's why during this time we call the seven minutes of terror because we, in those seven minutes, are at play eight hours of our lives and the sacrifice of all our family and let's not forget 2.5 million dollars. And then so I'm going to go very fast through each one of these phases. So the first phase is the entry phase. We have a capsule that protects the spacecraft as it enters the atmosphere and slows down. Uh, the bigger, the better. This is the biggest we could do that we can enter through our different facilities within the laboratory where I work. And it's a 4.5 meter diameter. Once again, we have the comparison against the Dini Cooper, so that you can see uh, the size of this capsule. It's the largest one of a robotic spacecraft that we ever had. And of course, we need a heat shield that actually uh, protects the spacecraft from the heat that is being generated and also the material that is light enough because you actually want to carry instruments to Mars. So how do we achieve that improvement in landing accuracy uh, as respect to other uh, missions? Well, the previous missions to the left, the ballistic entry, uh, that's what we used in all the previous missions. In that system, the spacecraft uh, center of mass is balanced. So the vehicle just enters with zero angle of attack. And as a consequence, the only thing you can do is that when we throw a rock, if you want to hit something, you need to aim. And the moment that rock leaves your hand, you just fall through the, you know, using, uh, uh, following the laws of, 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 of gravity and friction with the air. So there's no correction you can do. However, if you actually move the central mass of the spacecraft in a way that the, the spacecraft balance comes in at an angle, so essentially that's called an angle of attack. And that creates a lift force, and uh, you can see that little force on top. And now we can control the spacecraft orientation with thrusters in a way that we can fly the spacecraft, or actually the spacecraft flies itself, using an algorithm from the Apollo program that uh, we resurrected and uh, works very well. And, uh, and so in now the spacecraft actually has the knowledge of where it is with that little force. It's enough to actually fly its way to destination. So we use that and you can see uh, that the little uh, the ellipse size there is a curiosity ellipse size and we ended up uh, landing within two uh, uh, kilometers of the center of the ellipse. So we were very happy uh, the first time we attempted this technology and it worked. A lot of people felt that we were kind of crazy to not only uh, use this technology, but use it in such a dangerous place. Because can we be wrong who have faith? But you know, that's what you need to do. You need to take risks in life sometimes. So the next one is the parachute phase. Uh, it's the largest uh, su supersonic at that point. Parachute, uh, you can see people there uh, to get some scale. Parachutes, they look like simple devices. 
but you, you can see the dynamics of these partnerships as they open up. And they're pretty rapid, very chaotic process. And all of these things that you're seeing right now on Mars, this is obviously a, a slow camera, takes less than it's, it's, it's 0.3 seconds, less than a, than a second to open up. So it's a violent event and it's very difficult to model. And many times, these parachutes break the process. So we are very, very scared. The, 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 the three summer minutes of terror, this is the peak for many of us, uh, hoping that that parachute will open, otherwise it will be over pretty soon. So the, finally, the third phase is the propulsion phase, and uh, we need thrusters for that, some level of thrusters. And uh, the, uh, again, I mean, here we needed to innovate because all the previous ways that we have used like the previous rovers did not work for a rover of that size. So we tried airbags, we tried legs, we tried all sorts of things until we came out with this idea of the sky crane, essentially land the rover on its wheels using not its helicopter but not uh, uh, propellers but it's actually the uh, rockets. And uh, so we proposed this idea. I guess it's kind of a hack, so it's kind of proper for this uh, 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 event. And uh, it's interesting that the lab, we proposed this, half of the lab thought that we were brilliant and the other half thought that we were idiots. So we knew that we were doing something right. And uh, in any case, we did a few tests, only the mechanical part. Okay, this is all the type of tests that we did. The rest was actually done in the real landing that uh, uh, August 5th of 2012. Also, we did some tests of the touchdown to make sure that the rover could handle those uh, type of loads at touchdown. Those are the velocities of landing. And then, uh, here are some pictures of the rover as being assembled. That's the, all those circles there are the antennas for the radar. We need a very precise radar to measure the velocity and actually be able to land softly on Mars. And that's the capsule in its entirety. And these are, again, you can see the size of the rover by comparing with the, the, the technicians there assembling and testing the rover. That's a robotic arm that I wish I had time to explain it, but it's very complicated and sort of tools, including drills to take samples of the rover and, uh, and, uh, and then analyze it with these analytical uh, instruments. Um, the more instruments, uh, more, more pictures. That's me, a little now. And then, um, this is landing day. And uh, this is actual uh, the video that we took, that the spacecraft took. You can see the heat shield. The spacecraft is right now on, on the uh, parachute, oscillating and waiting for the right conditions to start the propulsive uh, part of our final uh, the slowing down process. I will tell you the moment that it starts the, the propulsion maneuver where it gets rid of the parachute and then it lands.
we command the the station that is in orbit about Mars to take a picture in the right direction at the right time to see whether we can catch it. Uh, 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 curiosity landing, and we actually did. You can see the detail of the parachute. Uh, it's beautifully the way it's seen. This for the first boost of uh, the, the first track of Curiosity as it got the away from the landing side. You can see what the thrusters did there. And uh, this is the first selfie of Mars. And, uh, and this is my chart. And now uh, I'm going to leave you very quickly with the. Uh, this is the, 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 the real place where we wanted to analyze chart with all the layers of uh, the, the clay minerals where my hide all the secrets of the, the of the geology and, and astrobiology of Mars. And I leave you very quickly now with uh, the way that uh, it was celebrated or uh, witnessed the landing of uh, curiosity around many places in the uh, United States. Thank you.